chapter 29. When we get home, I ask my mother to put me in bed. I refuse to eat lunch. I try to sleep, but quiz questions and why questions keep flying into my head. Why didn't they call me? Why didn't they tell me about the breakfast? Why can't I be like everybody else? I finally cry into my pillow. Butterscotch nudges me with her nose, but I ignore her. They left me on purpose. How could they do that? They left me on purpose. I feel like stomping on something, stomping and stomping and stomping. That makes me even crazier because I can't even do that. I can't even get mad like a normal kid. Penny peeks into my room. Then when she sees I'm awake, she climbs up on my bed and snuggles close to me. She smells like a watermelon bubble bath. She tries to count my fingers, then tries to count her own, but all she knows is one, two, three, five. So she says that over and over. Then she tries to teach Doodle to count. Two, Doodle, two. I feel myself relaxing a tiny bit. Oh, here you are, Penny, Dad says from my doorway. Are you making Dee Dee happy? Dee Dee, good girl, she tells Dad. Yes, she is. She's the very best, Dad agrees. You okay, Melody? He asks as he comes over to stroke my hair. I nod. I point to Dad's left wrist, which is wrapped in an ace bandage. Yeah, it hurts, he said, but that was a dumb thing to do. But I guess it made me feel better. I nod again. He lifts Penny from my bed with his right arm, ready for a snack. Miss Penny, he asks her. Do you want me to fix you something, Melody? He asks me. I'm not hungry. I shake my head, then point to the clock. Maybe later, Dad says. I smile at him. He quietly leaves the room with my sister. The phone rings. I hear mom say, oh, hello, Mr. Dimming. She walks quickly into my room, portable phone to her ear, her palm so tight around the receiver, I can see the veins in the top of her hand. No, I don't understand, mom said curtly. Why weren't we called? She listens to him for a minute then bursts out angrily. We could have easily been at the airport an hour earlier. We could have been there at dawn. She's almost shouting. How, don't you know how much this has devastated my daughter? A pause. Yes, I'm aware she's probably the brightest person on the team. Was, the word is was, there is no is. Mom pauses to listen again. You'll make it up to her? You have gotta be kidding. Mom hangs up on him and flings the phone into a corner. She wipes her eyes, pulls a tissue from a box on my desk and sits down heavily on the chair next to my bed. I listen to her blow her nose, then I turn over. Oh, Melody, if only I could make your hurt go away. I blink at my own tears. She pulls me onto her lap. It isn't the snugly fit it used to be, but it feels good. She rocks me, humming softly. I finally fall asleep listening to the rhythm of her heartbeat. <laughs>